folks, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I had a lot of positive response from my last article showing people how to actually do stuff in the field using Wireshark, practical examples, that sort of thing. So here's yet another one um, that I think you might enjoy. So here's um, Contacam, it's video recording DVR kind of stuff and it's monitoring this camera and there's the IP address 10.44, 10.51 and two things. Number one, we were having a problem with the feed, so we wanted to try to play it in a video player like VLC to see if it was the camera, the network, the software, that kind of thing. And secondarily, sometimes you do want to play the video stream and you don't want to have to use this software or the camera's, uh, the vendor's software as well. So this is a neat little trick or tip or way to figure out how to deconstruct or determine how software works. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're going to just shut this thing down. So I'm going to go down here to Contacam and I'm going to go to exit. It's just a little off the screen, you can't see it, but a little box popped up saying, please wait, it's just shutting the software down, getting rid of all the streams, all that kind of stuff. So over to Wireshark, number one, how do you know which adapter to use? So you can see my Ethernet adapter has activity, the other ones don't. So it's using Ethernet. Obviously, Wi Fi could have been on the list, all that kind of stuff. I've also shown you in previous videos how to get rid of these adapters if you don't want them. So I'm going to show you that along with this little demo because I think it's kind of helpful. So right now you see them all there and all I want is my Ethernet. I don't want all this other stuff because I may pick the wrong adapter, all that kind of jazz. So manage interfaces and I'm going to just take the check marks off all of the adapters except Ethernet. Okay. So now when I click OK, I just see the one Ethernet adapter. That's it. So I'm good. So now I need a filter and the IP address was 10.44.10.51. So I type host space 10.44.10.51. That's a capture filter. And I've talked about this in other videos as well. There's capture filters, display filters, that sort of thing. This is a capture filter. So that's the first thing. Second thing, I want to go to options and I'm gonna stop the capture after 100 packets because once the stream starts, you get a lot of data. We don't need all that. Probably the first, I'm gonna say 12 packets, you'll find your answer, but I put 100 in there anyways. So it says stop capturing automatically after 100 packets. Now, for the people who like to use the command prompt, T-Shark, dump cap, that kind of thing, you can actually find the command line parameters for this kind of th same option, but from the command line. So you can do all of this without going through the GUI if you'd like as well. So, but that's all we're doing. So 100 packets under options, back to input. We have host, space, the IP address, and that's it. So we hit start, and we see nothing because obviously we haven't started the software yet. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna start the software, and it's gonna take, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds to start up. So what I'm gonna do is just yap for a few seconds so we can prep for the next step. So when this thing starts up, uh, you'll see a stream, you'll see a command go out, and I'm gonna show you how to pull out the RTP it could be uh, whatever command, HTTP, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna use that same command in VLC. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna just start up VLC so I can have it ready to go. And we're gonna use VLC and we're gonna play the stream of the data that we get in our capture. There we go, so here's our capture. So it captured, you can see here it says packets 100, right? So it captured 100 packets and it stopped because that's exactly what we want to do. And as I told you before, you'll see the actual command uh, in the first couple of packets. So here it is, options, RTSP, the IP address, colon 554, which is RTSP, and the regular stuff. So if I come over here to the RTP, the real-time streaming protocol, you'll see request options, method options, URL. So just be careful because it may, obviously it may be collapsed. So you expand that. This might've been collapsed, expand that and you'll see URL colon RTSP, the IP, blah, 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 blah. So just right click on it, copy, value. Now I'm gonna to go to VLC, media, open network stream or control N, okay? And paste, you'll see the whole string there. You should see it. If you don't, then you right clicked on the wrong thing. You should see RTSP, and, and whatever the string is, play. So this will work if you're using Contacam or the vendor software, whatever video software you're using, right? And you can see there's the stream playing, no problem. So the other thing you can do, the next step, kind of the bonus step, if you will, 
open network screen. And in some cases, by changing that last number, 11, for example, 12, you get something called the substream, the secondary stream, which is usually lower quality. So if you were doing it over a slow network, Wi-Fi, cellular, that kind of thing. And you can see the box is, is considerably slow, uh, smaller, right? Because obviously the resolution is less. But again, it's going to be more bandwidth friendly. So that's a good way of figuring these things out. Sometimes you add one, sometimes you subtract one. Depends on the camera, but you get the point. And that's it, folks. So I hope that helped. Have a good day. Bye for now.